thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, welcome to Pew. I guess I'll give a little spiel about what we do um, for some of you that don't know. This way? Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. Thanks, Cal. Uh, Pew is a design development agency. Uh, we design and build like web and mobile applications. Um, we do all sorts of stuff, mobile apps, web apps, websites sometimes, yeah, branding, uh, things along those lines. Um, got 25 people, something like that, um, here and across nine states, up in Northwest Arkansas as well, a couple countries. Um, so yeah, we are stuff. we do a lot of Laravel development, all of our backend stuff is Laravel, so uh, we're excited to have Taylor Otwell here joining us today, um, creator of Laravel and Arkansas resident. <laughs> um, and he's gonna talk a little about Laravel, what it is, backgrounds. I kind of gave him a free reign of like what he wanted to talk about. Wasn't sure exactly what the crowd was gonna be, if it was gonna be more, you know, the, you know, technical heavy or background heavy. So I think that he's probably got a nice little overview of everything. So yeah, we'll just get it right now. Come on in, buddy. All right, thanks for coming out, everybody. Um, like you said, I'm Taylor Otwell. Um, I created Laravel way back in the day, it seems like now. Um, and I've been maintaining it ever since. And in this talk, I wanna kind of give you a high level overview of the background of what it is, why I created it, um, what you can build with it, and what people have built with it um, around the world. Um, so I guess we'll um, kind of start from the very beginning. Um, I grew up here in this area in Hot Springs. I kind of always tinkered around with computers when I was a kid and started building you know, my own websites in like middle school, as I'm sure if you're a coder, many of you also did, uh, about like my favorite video game or, or whatever. Um, coding stuff on my graphing calculator while sitting in English class, uh, not paying attention. Um, eventually went to Arkansas Tech, majored in IT. Um, and after that, went to go work for Arkansas Best Freight, uh, ABF, which has now been renamed to like Art Best, I think. Um, pretty large, publicly traded corporation, hundreds of developers um, on staff. And that's really where I like cut my teeth programming in a professional context, um, building serious applications. A lot of the applications I worked on were literally written before I was born um, at ABF. Um, at the top of every computer program at ABF, um, they have like a change log of who changed what in the program and when they made that change in the code. And uh, some of those dates I would see were like 1975, 1976, which is like 10 years before I was born. And this stuff is still running the company, um, you know, today. Pretty crazy, actually. Um, so, and it was at my time at ABF when I started to build Laravel in my free time. Um, and that was back in 2010. So, before we go, go any further, what is uh, Laravel? Laravel is kind of a starting point or a toolkit for building custom web applications. Um, most web applications, like if you've used Facebook or use Instagram or Uber or something like that, they have like a common core of functionality that they all do. For example, they all like store data about users. A lot of them send like email notifications. A lot of them um, maybe even send text messages. They validate incoming data from forms like people are typing in, you know, to make sure things are like in the proper format. Um, and every time you build a web application, you don't really want to have to start from scratch doing all of that stuff that is common to every web application. It would be great if you could just start at like a baseline of functionality um, and focus on what makes your application unique. Um, so Laravel is really for building custom web applications in that sense. And um, I say custom web applications to kind of differentiate it because a lot of times when I talk to people about Laravel um, that maybe don't have a development background, they want to equate it to like something graphical, like building a blog or WordPress or something like that. Um, whereas it's more for building custom bespoke things. Like for example, you wouldn't really build um, like a restaurant website in Laravel, like a simple static informational website. That's not really the kind of thing you use Laravel for. It's more for building more complex applications, maybe like a ticket booking system or um, a marketplace or like a hotel reservation system. Literally, the sky's 
honestly the limit in terms of what you can build with it, but it's really up to you. Um, so why did I build it and how did I get started building it? Um, and to explain this, I kind of want to set the scene um, for the years leading up to when I started working on Laravel. Um, and I want to go back all the way to like 2004. Um, in 2000, or before, prior to 2004, there was not any big dominant web framework like Laravel. When people built web applications, you kind of either started halfway from scratch or cobbled things together by copying code from various places across the internet and kind of cobbled together your own little system or your own little web application. Um, and so the downside to that is every time you go to a new project or like if you onboard a new developer into your company, every project is totally different. Like it's totally unique. They, it takes longer to onboard them and teach them like how your particular company did things. And there's not like a standardized structure and baseline for how things are built, uh, which can become a bit disorganized and hard to um, get the hang of. So in 2004, this Dutch guy named David Heinemeyer Hansen creates a framework and he calls it Ruby on Rails. I'll just pull up the website so you can see it. Oh, I lost my internet. What was? 34 page Gonna have to change that after the talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's broad, it's broadcast live on the internet. <laughs> All right. It's capital P, capital P. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, got it. Okay, so David Heinermeyer Hansen, who people call DHH uh, for short, he creates this framework called Ruby on Rails. It's, it's what Laravel is sort of inspired by, in a sense. Um, and he, it kind of totally changes the game in terms of web application development on the back end. Um, kind of in the same way, um, I don't know if this is too big of a comparison, but kind of like before the, I or after the iPhone, you know how every phone started looking like just a big screen? Like it just kind of changed how phones were built. Um, in a lot of ways, Rails sort of does that for back end web development. Um, everything that comes after that for a long time is very much inspired by how this was set up and how it was structured. Um, because like I said earlier, every time you start a web app, you don't want to start from scratch, and we don't want to figure out every time how we're going to connect to the database, how we're going to validate data, and decide those every project you do, which is very time consuming, and it's not really what matters for your application. Um, so David kind of comes down from the mountain, so to speak, and is like, hey, I kind of have pretty strong opinions on how we should do this whole web development thing, and here's what I think it should look like. Here's Ruby on Rails, my framework for building web applications. And he puts it out there for free, um, like as open source code that anyone can read and contribute to. And Rails really catches on like wildfire in this time period, um, 2004 and in the years following, um, because it makes building web applications so much easier, so much more productive, so much faster, uh, that it really becomes immensely popular. It actually becomes so popular that it's just installed by default on all new MacBooks for a, for a period of years. Um, I don't think that's the case anymore, but that shows you like how far reaching this framework had become. That if you bought an Apple MacBook, Rails was like already on the MacBook. You didn't have to download anything, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, so Rails is immediately used to build some pretty big startups that are still with us today. Um, the initial version of Twitter is built using Ruby on Rails. Airbnb is built using Ruby on Rails. Uh, Shopify is built using Ruby on Rails. Um, these big Companies that went on to IPO and of course be like household name companies are built using this free framework. And actually, when I went back to look at it, the run from like 24 to 2010 when I started building Laravel is like this crazy explosion of big startups. So during that six year time period, we get Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Uber, Airbnb, YouTube, Shopify, the iPhone comes out during this period. So it's like this big explosion of companies that go on to become huge. Uh, startup, unicorn, billion dollar companies. Um, so that brings us to 2010, when I start building Laravel. I'm kind of coming off the heels of all of this startup explosion. There's all this cool stuff being built. And I'm sitting here working at Arkansas Best thinking, man, it'd be cool like if I could build a startup. You know, like, you know, it doesn't have to be as big as like Facebook or Twitter, but it would be cool to tinker with my own ideas and build my own businesses. Um, but the issue with that is I don't know Ruby on Rails and I don't know Ruby, which is the programming language that it's built in. Um, I do happen to know this other programming language called PHP, 
uh, but there's not really anything like Ruby on Rails for PHP back in 2010. So um, that kind of leaves me in this position of like, well, I guess I could try to build something like Ruby on Rails for PHP so that I could build my own business ideas faster. Um, so that's what I decided to do. I decided to start creating like my own sort of uh, framework inspired by Ruby on Rails in PHP, and I work on it for like six months. Late at night after Abigail, my wife, goes to bed, I'm staying up until like 2 a.m., which seemed super easy back then when I was like 24 years old. <laughs> um, and I'm coding on it just like constantly for months. Uh, and I would write it, didn't like it, delete it, rewrite it several times. Um, and after six months, I kind of was at a point where I thought that it was kind of done and maybe worth putting out there into the world. Um, it wasn't nearly as fleshed out as it is today, but it was a good like first step. Um, so I put it out there on a website called GitHub, which is now owned by Microsoft. It's basically the place where everyone shares their free code that they're going to share with the world. It's kind of the de facto place to do that. Um, and I honestly didn't have any expectation of like really anyone using Laravel. Like I thought maybe a few people would use it. That would be really neat if they did. But honestly, it wasn't like the main goal even. You know, I really only built Laravel so that I could build my own business ideas faster. It wasn't really to like make Laravel a business. That, was never, that wasn't like the intention. Um, so the first day I put it out there, on GitHub, instead of like liking something on Facebook, on GitHub you can like star it. You can star the code. Um, and I think I got four stars on the first day. And honestly, I was like super pumped about that. I thought that was just like crazy uh, that anyone would even notice at all. Um, but it turned out that a lot of other PHP developers were thinking the same thing I was, which was, man, I really wish we had something like this, Ruby on Rails, in PHP. Um, because at the time, a lot of people were kind of like, I, I, maybe I should jump to another programming language or change jobs to something that feels more fresh and current. And um, Laravel kind of came in like a breath of fresh air in this time period, and kind of the right place at the right time, I guess you would say, to um, really capture a lot of those people and reinvigorate their um, passion for building web applications in PHP. So it kind of quickly gets this set of devoted followers, which I did not expect at all. They're all hanging out in some chat room all day, talking about Laravel. There's like a couple hundred people in there. And uh, I'm in there like listening to their feedback, listening to their ideas, making changes to the code, improving it. It's just like this crazy time. Um, and I just suddenly find myself like the maintainer of this new framework, which is a weird place to be. Um, I'm going to stop there for a second and show you a little bit about what Laravel looks like in the code before I keep going any further, because I don't want to um, keep talking without just actually showing you uh, some code. How many people are developers here? Okay, about half. Um, I didn't make this super code heavy, but I just wanted to show it to you because it felt like kind of remiss to talk about Laravel forever and never show you any code at all. Um, so we'll keep it pretty light. I've actually got Laravel, um, as you might expect, installed on my laptop here. Um, actually, the easiest way, um, if you are a developer and you've never used Laravel, we actually recently released this tool for Mac called Laravel Herd, like a herd of elephants. Um, and it's a graphical installer. You install it onto your MacBook. It includes PHP. It includes the Laravel stuff you need to start building Laravel applications. Um, so super fast to get started, totally free. Um, so check that out if you want to try Laravel, but you're not sure how to get started. OK, so to create a new Laravel application, let me make this font a little bigger. I can just do Laravel new example app. And it will ask me if I want a starter kit. Um, that basically can scaffold out, like if you know you need to log people into your application, it can have all those things ready to go for you. I'll just skip that for now. It asks you a few other questions. And then it starts downloading and installing all of the Laravel stuff, all of the Laravel code. And then um, once that's done, I can actually just pull it up in my browser, exampleapp.test. And this is like the Laravel welcome screen. So this is our fresh Laravel application that we're ready to start customizing and building. Um, now, I actually have another Laravel application I've already kind of prepped for this talk that I'm going to switch over to. Um, I think it's view.test. No, it's not. What did I name it? View demo. View demo test. OK, so this is a, a different Laravel application. But let's go ahead and like jump into the code. Um, let's pop this open. 
So I'm going to go to this file called routes slash web. Um, so this is sort of the main entry point into a Laravel application. And it determines when I go somewhere in my web browser, like when I went to fewdemo.test, that's sort of like the root page of the application. You know, there's no slash something else after it. Um, this route git slash, that is corresponds to that page. So this code will be invoked, this return view welcome, when we hit that URL in the browser. And it will execute that code and it will turn that content and it will be displayed on the user's screen. Um, so for example, we could like add another route under this. So if I just copy and paste that, I'm gonna change this to like few, and then I can just return some text like, you know, welcome to few. And then we can just hit that in our browser, slash few, and we see that text. So you can kind of see how it's routing what we're doing in the browser to a certain block of code. Um, I know that seems super simple, but if you're not using a framework, just doing that is sort of like a lot of plumbing that you're gonna have to consider, like a lot of custom code that you're gonna have to write. So this is just an example of kind of what you get out of the box in Laravel, the ability to define these routes and make it all neat and clean is a, you know, it, it, that's what kind of what Laravel is bringing to the table or one small piece of it. Now, of course, if you're building um, a web application, you're probably not only returning just like simple text, like I did here. You're probably pulling some data from somewhere about users. You're pulling some info. You're showing it on the screen. You're doing uh, kind of more complicated stuff. Um, so here's kind of a, a light example of that. Let's pretend we kind of have our own Airbnb um, company we're founding, few B and B, um, and we have we have some houses stored somewhere in the database, so some properties. Um, in this route, you can see slash houses. So again, I would get to this in my browser by going to few dash test or few at demo dot test slash houses, and this little block of code would be executed. And you can see this time I'm actually passing some data to the what we call the view or what we're going to show on the screen. So I'm going to get all the houses out of the database. That's what that house colon colon all means. Give me every house we have stored, and then we'll send it to this index view. And then if we scroll down here on line 19, you can say I'm saying for each house that I have, I'm going to loop through it. I'm going to show the name of the house here on line 27, what city it's in, and how much it costs to rent that house. Okay, so that's just a really simple example of getting data from the database and passing it to the front end. And if we hit this in our browser, we can see, ooh, that's really big. We can see we have a few houses here, okay? We have like Lake Hamilton Party House, Cozy on Chanel, Downtown Bungalow, and Mountain Retreat. Okay, so these are the houses we have in our database. And that code executed when we called um, this page. It sent the houses to the front end. We looped through, we showed them all. So that's all great. And this house colon colon all thing to get everything from the database, this is another one of those things that looks really simple when I like highlight it here, but behind the scenes, Laravel's doing a ton of stuff to make that happen. They code, that is code you didn't have to write for your own application. You just sort of get it for free with Laravel. And I don't mean to say like this how the concept of houses is built into Laravel, but like I defined that for this demo, um, but you can build whatever app you want. But Laravel gives you the kind of the facilities to interact with this data in the super easy way where you can just say, give me everything. Or down here, if we look at my example, you can see I put these cities at the top to kind of let us filter to only show houses in those cities. So I actually defined another route that is houses slash, and you can see I have city in curly brackets. And so what that means is if you see houses slash anything, it's sort of like a wild card. Um, I want you to invoke this route. So that lets us do things like houses slash little dash rock, houses slash hot dash springs. And this route will be invoked, and it will give us the value of that wildcard segment right here in our function, and we can use that to filter the houses by the city. Hopefully I'm not losing people there, but um, it lets you build kind of more dynamic applications where you're filtering data and, and modifying what you actually return. So you can see if I click this litter rock, it takes us to houses slash litter rock, and we use that Little Rock value on the back end to pull only the houses from Little Rock, and we're showing them here on the screen. And I can switch between cities, you know, Russellville, Hot Springs, Little Rock. Okay, so Laravel's 
letting you do this kind of dynamic routing, pull data from the database, and really where you take it is you can get as complex as you want in terms of what you want to build, honestly. But this is just hopefully a very simple introduction of what Laravel looks like uh, because I think I have a hard time explaining um, what Laravel is to people in like this very um, like kernelized example because people want it to be, um, like I said, like a blog builder or like a, a website builder. And it's, it's not that. It's, it's only code. There's no graphical component other than what you build custom yourself, uh, which is great because that means you can build anything. You're not like constrained by um, a certain like, um, I don't, you're just not constrained in terms of what you can build. Okay, so that's kind of as much code as I really wanted to dig into, so I'm sorry if you're a developer and you're hoping for just like hardcore <laughs> hours of coding. Um, but, you know, just to kind of keep it light and kind of keep moving with this um, kind of the backstory on Laravel. Okay, so um, I told the story of how I initially, kind of why I initially created Laravel. I started building it in 2010. I put it out there in 2011 because it takes me six, seven months to build. Um, so what happened after that? That was 12 years ago now. Um, so I find myself the maintainer of this popular, it's, it's not super popular yet, but it's, it's becoming popular web development framework. Um, I respond to bug reports, I'm triaging uh, other people's code that they want to contribute to the framework because since Laravel is open source, anyone can send me code on GitHub and say, hey, I think this should be in Laravel. Do you accept or reject this code? And literally there's like a merge button and a close button on GitHub. So I can either merge it into Laravel and accept their contribution to the framework, or I can say, eh, I, not right now, I don't want this code, or, and close it. Uh, which is tough to do, actually, and kind of sad <laughs> when you have to like turn down people's code. Um, but that's kind of what I find myself doing on a daily basis, but there's kind of a problem with that, and the problem is I'm not making any money off of Laravel, and I'm spending all this time maintaining it um, sort of in my free time as like volunteer work. Um, which is not super sustainable because as Laravel becomes more popular, I can't spend six hours a day fixing Laravel bugs and answering people because I have a day job. I'm actually still working like a regular job um, and you know have other responsibilities. Um, so it would be great if I could monetize this popular thing I've created so that I could just work on it full time and make the whole operation more sustainable. Um, and I know if you're not super familiar with open source software, it sounds weird, like, why don't you just charge for Laravel? Like, the answer seems, like, super simple. Um, but it's weirdly not that simple. <laughs> um, every other tool like Laravel, historically, had been released for free. There was just not an example, really, of charging for something like Laravel. Even Microsoft's own competitor to Ruby on Rails, which they came out with a few years after Rails came out, was free. So, like, even Microsoft is not charging for these kinds of tools. So there wasn't a precedent, really, for charging uh, for this kind of thing. I wish there was. That would have made the whole thing a lot simpler. Um, so I really don't figure out how to make any money at all from what I had created for almost four years, three and a half, four years after I created it. Um, I'm, and Laravel's growing substantially during these years. We're doing conferences in New York City and Washington, D.C., um, with a few hundred people that are turning out, and um, it's becoming a bit um, stressful to try to maintain Laravel and work a regular job. But in 2014, I had this idea of maybe how I can monetize the framework a little bit, and it was born out of some stuff I was doing at my day job. I was finding myself, which I'm using Laravel at my day job at this point, and I'm having to build a lot of servers and push Laravel code out onto those servers a lot, and it's, it's really time consuming. Basically the process of taking my Laravel project that I built on my laptop and putting it out on the internet for everyone to see. That process, I was doing that manually a lot, and I was like, hmm, I should just like automate this for myself um, just to kind of make my job easier. And once I did that, it sort of clicked in my brain like, hey, this is actually really nice. I could put like a nice graphical front end in front of all this automation and people could like pay me to use it, which is what I did. Um, in 2014, I launched this new product called Laravel Forge. It, is, it was sort of an optional um, add-on, you might say, to the Laravel ecosystem, where if you had a Laravel project you had built and you wanted to ship it out there onto the internet, we could kind of automate a lot of that process for you, and you could pay us monthly in exchange for that, and 
now it felt like maybe I could have a shot at making this whole Laravel thing actually profitable and sustainable. And I remember driving around with Abigail. Um, we lived down in Bryant and thinking like, um, you know, I hope this whole Forge thing just like pays our house, like our house or our, our electricity bill. Like it was, I never expected it to be like a huge thing, but I would have been thrilled if it made just a little bit of extra money, um, of fun money each month. Well, I launched Forge at Laracon in 2014 in New York City um, at the Scholastic Theater. And about like two weeks after launching it, I was bringing in more money from Forge than I was making in my regular job, which became this crazy place to find myself. Um, it was just a wild success in a way that I didn't totally expect it. I expected it to make some money, of course, or else I wouldn't have built it, but I didn't expect it to grow so fast. Um, so then I find myself running a company while also having a day job. And a few months into that, my boss is like, look, you can't run your own company like and work here. Like you gotta go <laughs> basically like soft fires me pretty much. <laughs> um, but you know, you just got, your hands are too full. Like you gotta go. Um, and so January 1st, 2015, first full time day working on Laravel, running Laravel Forge, my new business. I don't have any employees. It's, it's still just me. Uh, so I'm doing customer support. I'm adding features to the product. I'm you know, doing everything. I'm still maintaining Laravel. And finally, Laravel has become a sustainable business and kind of grows from there. And to move really quickly from there, I go on to launch a variety of other projects um, in the following years. So in 2015, I launch a, another, serv another subscription service called Envoyer, uh, which is sort of um, an augment to Laravel Forge even for people that need to deploy their code with absolutely no downtime for their end users or customers. Uh, we launched that as a subs subscription service in 2015. Um, I take everything I learned from building Forge and Envoy, all the subscription billing part, like all the code of billing this user monthly, building this user yearly, I extract that into like a billing software starter kit and package it up and sell it as Laravel Spark in 2016. Um, we introduced that. Um, in 2018, I co-founded a product with um, David Hemphill, who just lives up the road in Spring Hill, Missouri. Um, we built a graphical admin panel for Laravel applications. So this actually does add kind of a graphical component to your Laravel app where you can see all the data, manipulate it in this graphical user interface without really having to do a lot of coding yourself. Um, and then the last commercial project that we've launched was Laravel Vapor in 2019, which is an auto-scaling deployment platform for companies that need, that have a lot of web traffic. Then their web applications getting serious traffic, they need to be able to handle um, a high amount of users. This is sort of our more enterprise or businessy solution for deploying Laravel applications at that kind of scale. Um, and that's also a subscription service. And then peppered in, Throughout all those years, I build lots of other free stuff. Um, so Cashier, Dusk, a lot of the stuff on this list, Echo, Octane, uh, Sail, Sanctum, Socialite, Telescope, Scout, all of those things were things I wrote um, throughout that time period, but gave away for free as sort of additions to the Laravel ecosystem, just adding cool features to the framework and kind of based on community demand and what people wanted. And some of them were just sort of like personal, interesting projects for me that turned into actual open source products. So uh, where are we now? So currently Laravel has 10 employees. It's not just me anymore, thankfully. Uh, the business would be in bad shape if it was. Uh, we're spread out all around the world. We have employees in US, of course, England, Ireland, Belgium, Portugal, Australia, and Malaysia. Um, most of them are devs. We have some design, a design person on our team and a customer support person on our team. Um, we continue to maintain all of these products and we run our Laracon conferences. We actually have a conference coming up. If you are interested in traveling to Amsterdam on February 5th and 6th, you can find us at Laracon Europe. Um, really great event, really cool venue. Um, and we've been running this event since 2013. So this will be our 10th year. Wow, that's crazy. Didn't think about that. Um, yeah, so. What has been built with Laravel? So Laravel is used by developers in basically every country of the world. If you look at the Google Analytics, we get literally get traffic from every country, even some hits from North Korea, which is really weird. Um, I'm not sure what they're using Laravel for. <laughs> um, but literally every country in the world has 
someone has access to Laravel.com, either to read the documentation or to learn about it or whatever. Um, so some of the biggest markets are US, India, um, you know, huge, big population, uh, UK, Netherlands, um, and then like Indonesia, Vietnam, Brazil, really big Laravel uh, market there. Um, so a lot of, a lot of countries. Um, and what's been built with Laravel? So some household names that have built stuff with Laravel are um, Apple, Pfizer, uh, Siemens, St. Jude Children's Hospital has actually built a lot of cool stuff with Laravel. Um, the New York Times, Sweetwater Sounds, any like musicians in the group? Okay, if you're, if you're a musician, you've probably heard of Sweetwater Sounds. Um, so some of these companies let me know what they build with Laravel and some don't. Um, most don't actually, um, especially Apple's super tight-lipped about like what they do internally, but uh, they send people to Laracon most years. Um, no idea what they're doing with Laravel though. Um, so to kind of just give you a, a couple examples, so I mentioned St. Jude, so they built um, a cool system called PCAN. It is for exploring sort of genome data for pediatric cancer patients and looking at the trends and helping doctors and scientists analyze this data. And this entire system is built with Laravel on the back end. Of course, this front end is all custom coded, and, uh, but this whole system is powered by Laravel for exploring genome data um, in pediatric cancer patients. And this is just one system that St. Jude has built with Laravel. They have built a variety of systems um, with Laravel. They're pretty heavy users of the framework. Um, I mentioned Sweetwater Sound, so that is at sweetwater.com. Sweetwater is a big company. They do 1.7 billion, I think, when I looked in revenue every year. Um, if you've ever been into music gear or anything, you've probably ordered something from Sweetwater Sound at some point. Every aspect of this company basically runs on Laravel, surprisingly. Even down to like the video camera that takes videos of people coming down the slide in their lobby is a Laravel system. Um, so. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. Um, the, every order goes through a Laravel system, even how to pack the box and what cardboard box to use to fit everything correctly is a Laravel system. Um, this is probably one of the biggest companies and most entrenched in Laravel examples that I've seen. Um, Few built an application called Fitbody. I asked for a couple examples of stuff they had built. Um, so this is, I guess, a mobile application for, by Anna Victoria. It's like a, an influencer fitness influencer. Um, it lets people do sort of comprehensive uh, fitness experience, um, not just like workout routines, like a more comprehensive app. And this is an example of an iPhone app that is powered by Laravel on the back end. Um, so this is also a very common use case for Laravel. Um, you know, you can build an iPhone app that calls out to a Laravel system on the back end to get data, to update things. Um, so lots of iPhone apps out there in the world, especially ones like this, uh, talking to Laravel applications on the back end. Very common way to use the framework. Um, so to quickly kind of bring this to a close and wrap up, and I'll um, do some Q&A if anyone has any questions, but um, some lessons learned that I kind of distilled out of this experience starting um, a web startup that I never intended to start. Almost. <laughs> um, one was, I think everything I built was solving my own problem. And a lot of this advice might be geared for people that are interested in small uh, software businesses. But I felt like I was always just scratching my own itch. You know, everything that I built just felt super natural to build because I was having a frustration in my career or my day job. So I just built an automated solution to that and then um, ended up like packaging up and marketing it. Um, but it was the nice thing about this approach was it kind of became a no lose situation because I was just fixing my own problems and if no one else used them, like whatever, like I made my own life better. Um, so I never viewed it as like, to, for me it was just like a win-win. Uh, either people use it and that's great or they don't and it doesn't matter because I made this own cool tool that I get to use in my regular job and my own life is better. So I, I didn't feel like there was any opportunity for me to really lose uh, when I was building this stuff. Um, the second is, don't be scared to build something in an established market. Um, when I first built Laravel, it was not the first web application framework ever built. It was not like a novel idea. And I think um, young software developers sometimes think they have to build, if they're gonna build a startup, it has to be like this very unique novel idea. Like I have to build the next 
Uber or the next Twitter, something that's like very different. And that's not the case. You can actually build products in established marketplaces um, because they're established and that would actually prove that there's a customer base around that problem because it's very risky and sort of extremely rare to build like a totally novel idea, you know, that has no proven market, has never existed before. Um, and there was sort of, you know, when, when new stuff, when Laravel first came out, there was sort of some uh, negativity around like, why do we need another framework? Like, we, are, we already have frameworks. But if you can come to the market with like a little bit of a different twist, either better documentation, better design, easier to use, a little bit faster, you can actually come and compete in an established market um, without having to build some risky novel idea. Um, Jason Cohen, who talks quite a bit about entrepreneurship in the software space, um, he points out that it's easy to sell ice cream on like a hot beach. It doesn't matter if there's an ice cream truck here and a competing ice cream truck here. They both sell because the market is so big. Like the, the piece of the pie is so big, everyone wants <laughs> ice cream. So there's a lot of markets like that in software where you can come into an established space with just a little bit better in some area and really, um, you know, maybe not become a publicly traded multi-billion dollar company, but you can build a very comfortable business for, you know, um, you and your team. Uh, and lastly, I like to focus on uh, what I call playing for the fans. So when building something like Laravel, there's a lot of opinions. And when you, if you build a software startup in general, there's a lot of opinions from lots of different people about what you should focus on, how this should work, how that should work. And it's easy to get lost in that sea of opinions. And that happened to me numerous times over the past 12 years where I was kind of trying to appease people that weren't my core audience of people that were interested in what I was doing. Um, and there was just, uh, I could have got lost in that so many times, but one of my fav <laughs> favorite things to do, or it made me laugh while I was prepping this, is I Googled why Laravel sucks. <laughs> and there was a lot of results on this. <laughs> The first one is Laravel sucks. Here's a hundred reasons. Why I'd actually, I didn't click on this actually. Is there actually a hundred? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's actually a hundred. Why does Laravel suck? Why is Laravel so culty? Just <laughs> Why you should not use Laravel. And it goes on and on. One of my favorites was, um, where was it? Oh, does anyone still use Laravel in 2019? <laughs> Is Laravel overrated 2015? And you know, like that could really like get you down, but the, looking back on it is kind of funny because Laravel has grown a lot since 2019. It, it's doubled in size um, since then. Um, and I try not to change like my vision of what Laravel should be for kind of a vocal minority. Like the rock band Slayer, you know, they play metal music. It doesn't matter how much you want them to play Taylor Swift music at their concerts. Like they do metal, you know, that's what they do best. Um, so if you don't want that, you're at the wrong concert. You know what I mean? So um, I, I got off track a lot over the years trying to be Taylor Swift when I should have just been Slayer. You know what I mean? And just stuck to what our core audience really liked and what made Laravel Laravel. Um, so that's what I call playing for your fans, playing the hits for your fans. Um, so that's an overview of Laravel, its background, kind of what it is, why I built it, um, and where we are now. If anyone have any questions, I can field them, but if not, I'll be hanging around for a little bit and can chat after. And thanks for having me. I, I, I used to get that question all the time, and I haven't got it uh, recently. Uh, no. Um, so when I was trying to think of names, I was having the hardest time coming up with a super deep meaning, because that's what I wanted. You know, I wanted like a name that had some deeper meaning. So I just started thinking of words that sounded cool to me, but had no meaning at all. And um, at the time, I was playing Civilization, like the video game, and they have a caravel ship in the game. And so I just like changed the first letter to Laravel and it was like, that sounds like a high end piece of software, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's, that's what I went with. Uh, but no, there's not really like a big deep meaning. Any other questions? Nope. All right, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming.